Thank you very much. Shalom greetings to you all. I hope you got to enjoy the Festival of Love. And you should not have to wait till the Festival of Love in order to love. Now, wouldn't life be grand if you simply felt love all the time? Love is old. Love is new. Love is all. Love is you. Well, why can't you? Why don't you? Most people think they're pretty good at expressing love, but not quite as good at accepting love. Why do you think that is? How much of it could be because sometimes people think they are unworthy of feeling that good or getting that amount of love and support. And when you stop and think about it, you won't believe it's true that all the love that you've been given has all been meant for you. Now, many have grown up in a society that did not provide a lot of backslapping out of boys or out of girls. Instead, there were a lot of what's wrong with you. And when you ask people that great question again, why? Why shouldn't you feel good and loved and treasured? And nowadays, why can't you go to a lousy movie without getting shot? You tend to get one or two answers. Either you get an, I don't know, which is just a way of saying, I'd rather not either talk of it or have to think about it. Or you get the title to this week's Parsha. Friends, this is Ekev, because, ah, because the world is round. It turns me on. Now, it really means on the heel of, but our colloquialism translates it as because. Now, interestingly, it has the same root as the name Yaakov, Jacob, the twin who was born grabbing at the heel of Esau and set this whole story in motion. So perhaps it is really just his karma being played out over 400 plus years, or is that now about 4,000 years? But if you want to know why we translate on the heel of, as because, and why we answer those questions the way we do, it is because. Now, what an answer to a question. We all used it. We've all had it used on us. We all did not like it as an answer. Why? Because. Remember, friends, your parents actually came by it honestly. There is really only one small part of the Torah that explains anything. The rest is just obey because right so it, it's the way people have always been because the wind is high it blows my mind and so it's become an accepted answer for thousands of years we've not asked for decent explanations even though we wanted them how many of you have answered your kids by saying because now if you did not like something stop the pattern and do it differently i never liked it as an answer given me in fact i still don't that's so why i tried my best to never give it as an answer to my daughter this my friends it is a fantastic Parsha, because that begins by reiterating a whole bunch of blessings that come the people's way for obedience without giving a reason. And one of the fantastic tools of Moses that I want you to see is used again and again, the tying together of generations, the generation of Egypt and the generations of the future. Deuteronomy 7.18, you shall surely remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh, Again and again in Deuteronomy, the Exodus story, the founding of the nation through liberation from slavery, is invoked in order to exhort the people to confront their own frightening historic reality. Friends, these people weren't there. But if you tell someone enough, they must remember. Hey, they must remember. Don't you remember? Do you remember? The 21st night of September, love was changing the minds of pretenders while chasing the clouds away. What a fantastic earth, wind, and fire classic. Now you shall remember all the way on which the Lord your God led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to afflict you, to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commands or not. What a fantastic statement to give to a group who are not even born until halfway through the journey. And the actual translation of the text as it is written is Yahweh, your God, had you go these 40 years in the wilderness in order to degrade you, to test you, to know what was in your heart written with the name that is never pronounced in the same term as what the Egyptians are described as having done to the people and what the people themselves are to do on Yom Kippur to degrade you to test you to know and friends this sequence of verbs is especially powerful because of the ways that they are used before now the word degrade as I said is used to describe what the Egyptians did to the Israelites as slaves it's also used for what Shechem did to Dina and for what the people of Israel are supposed to do to themselves on Yom Kippur. It means to bring down, to humble, to lower someone. Now the difference 
is that the Egyptians do it to weaken the Israelites, whereas God does it to test their strength, which leads to the second word here, test, which is the word for what God does in commanding Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Now, the result of that test is that God says, now I know that you fear God. So the third word here, likewise, is no, conveying that the purpose of a divine test is still to establish what is in a human's heart. I love that that word is used, a human's. Now Moses is now telling the people that the reason for many of the tribulations they've experienced for 40 years was to test them. Hey, when asked, he could have simply said, because, friends, Get used to seeing this in Deuteronomy and seeing an incredible retelling of tales. An interesting retelling of tales, mind you. In this Parsha alone is a retelling of the story of the tablets, the golden calf, and the fire on the mountain for 40 days with an interesting twist. And the Lord said to me, Arise, go down quickly from here, for your people that you brought out of Egypt has acted ruinously. They have quickly swerved from the way that I charged them. They have made them a molten image. Did you catch it, my friends? Here God says, Moses brought them out from Egypt, not he. And there are other differences. Moses tells how he carved the second set of tablets and built the ark. And I made an ark of a of wood, and I carved two stone tablets like the first ones. And I went up the mountain, the two tablets in my hand, and he wrote on the tablets, like the first writing, the ten words that the Lord had spoken to you on the mountain from the midst of the fire on the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them to me. Believe it or not, because of that statement, Rashi and Rambam and other great Torah commentators therefore say, well, there must have been two arcs. Why? Because. Because in Exodus we hear how Moses had Bezalel build the ark. And the building of it took quite a while. Here it sounds like Moses just quickly carved it while up on the mountain and brings it back down with him. Friends, it is the differences which you will notice throughout this book. And many of those differences have simply helped to confound things. Only your fathers did the Lord desire to love them. And he chose their seed after them, chose you from all the peoples as on this day, and you shall circumcise the foreskin of your heart. Friends, there's that concept of the foreskin of your heart. This concept occurs in two books of the Torah, twice in Deuteronomy, uh, once in Leviticus. Now, the sign of the Abrahamic covenant, and probably the most commonly observed of the commandments by Jewish families for centuries, is circumcision. But the Torah commands the circumcision of one's heart as well. It establishes that outward fulfillment of practices without also feeling it in one's heart is simply insufficient. And in addition, the concept of circumcising one's heart, unlike physical circumcision, applies to both women and men. You know, but here we go again. Deuteronomy touches here on a tense theological paradox. Its version of creation and creator is resoundingly monotheistic. The Lord is no local deity, but the God of all the heavens and the earth, and yet unaccountably, he's decided to choose this one people and show it special affection. Why? Because the sky is blue, it makes me cry. It is the differences which stand out. And friends, isn't it the differences we notice in life and not the similarities? We like people the same as us, but it is the differences that allow us to, de de to determine friend from foe, what makes us the same, what makes us different. Perhaps our greatest lesson in seeing differences is in seeing that we can overcome any differences between us and return to oneness. We are the same. It was one God who created all. And friends, this Parsha ends with a fascinating, slightly different description of territory. From the wilderness in the Lebanon, from the river, the Euphrates River, and as far as the Hindu Sea, this will be your territory. And believe it or not, there was a biblical character that actually ruled such a territory. And that too may give a hint as to some of the historical timing of the story. But it is not who you think it was. Differences. See them. Feel them. Touch them. Heal them. Now, as an aside, there's also another very famous expression that comes from this Parsha. Not on bread alone does the human live. Which, of course, we simply say is man does not live by bread alone. 
Now, we tend not to say human that often. Now, maybe we should, so we could remember that as what we are, or at least supposed to be. But if you wondered where the expression, which all of us have used, came from, wonder no, ma- no more. Here is where it's from. I actually thought it was somehow connected to Marie Antoinette and her let them eat cake comment. The world is sacred, and so is everything in it. Express your gratitude. Friends, light a candle. Make a wish. Celebrate your life and the lives of those you love. Share your feelings with them. Live free. Be free. Honor your freedom. Be well. Be happy. And be blessed. Share and honor the light and all who live in the light and continue to shine. Continue to send everyone you know goodwill and love. Pray for peace and freedom for everyone. And end to terror and hatred. Remember, friends, we are a community. We learn together. We celebrate each other. We love each other. We share this ride together, men and women equally. Let us send out love. Heart of mind, be still. You can play with fire, but you'll get the bill. Fall in love, friends. It's the great gamble worth taking. Ask questions. And do not take because as an answer. Why do we never get an answer when we're knocking at the door? Because the truth is hard to swallow. That's what the war of love is for. Thank you all. Love you. See you all next time. And I do love seeing you again. And remember, your wishes do come true. Bless you all. Shabbat Shalom.